No. Get away from me. Um, all right, so let's get started. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how to use your uh, calculator uh, to solve some of these. I'm gonna do one of the harder problems. Well, harder for you, easy for somebody like me. Um, let's uh, let's do this one. This seems like a pretty common one. So what I want to show you is on your uh, TI. Uh, calculator, you could solve any equation by graphing the left-hand side of the equal sign uh, on one equation and then graphing the right-hand side of the equal sign on the other side. Find the intersection, and that gives you the solution to the set. So what I'm going to do, this is a, I, I, chose, I chose this one because it's kind of complicated. So I'm going to come into y equals, I suggest you do the same. And it was negative six absolute value in this case. Uh, what was the absolute value of negative X minus seven? Now, this is the tricky part. Whenever I want to say negative something, I use the negative symbol on the calculator. Whenever I want to subtract something, I use the subtraction symbol. You got to be careful. If you get an error message, you're using the wrong one. Okay, so I want to say negative x, but I want to subtract 7 from it. Notice that the subtraction or minus symbol is longer and in the middle. Notice that the negative symbol is shorter and up a little bit. So I think we do plus 10, right? Can help me on this one? Yeah, well, I'm recording a video right now. So let me finish this video and then I'll help you with the problem that you're working on. Maybe we could do it next. All right. So, yep, plus 10. Now, that what I did is I plugged this whole thing into my calculator. That's the whole equation right there. I plugged that in my calculator. Just the left-hand side of the equal sign. The right-hand side of the equal sign is just 4. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to uh, the next equation. And I'm going to put 4. And um, a couple of things. Based on this, I know that the vertex is going to be at 7 comma 10. I know that. So I need to make sure that that's in my parameter of the graph. So I'm going to go to zoom uh, standard. That goes from negative 10 to positive 10 for both x and y. Now, you could find this algebraically. That's not what I'm going to teach. Well, I've taught you how to do the algebra. Do the algebra. I want you to do the algebra. The problem you run into is sometimes the answer isn't x equals 2 or x equals 3. Sometimes it's x equals 3.5. Well, what you could do on your calculator, your calculator will actually find the intersection for you. So what you want to do is see this little word right here where it says calc? If I hit second and the trace button, it takes me to a calculate menu. Everything, I don't know if you guys have picked up on this, everything you do with graphing somehow uses one of these five buttons at the top. So what I want to do is I want to find the actual intersection. Scroll down to option number five, hit enter. Now, I think, look at these x values. This is negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight. So I think I need to move my x value closer to that. Right now, X is at zero, so I'm just going to move to the left. And what this does is I'm moving along the blue curve, and you'll start to see it pop up on the screen once I get to negative five. See how that happens? And I want to move that little cursor till it's pretty darn close. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to get it exactly. I'd have to zoom in. So I'm going to stop right there. I want to get it pretty close to... Well, hold on. Let's see. Uh, it asked for the second curve. Again, you adjust it to where you think the intersection is. And then guess is pretty close. It's negative 6. So when x equals negative 6, both equations equal 4. So that's one of our solutions. Now, to do the other one, I have to start from scratch. I'm going to hit second, trace, go down to intersect. And now I'm going to move my uh, cursor. Will you guys get that door real quick? 
I got to move my cursor pretty close to this intersection. I'll do this. Shh, settle down. Just let them in. And negative 8. So my solution is negative 8 and negative 6. So now that I know that, which one is furthest to the left? Negative 6 or negative 8? Negative 8. So we say that's the smaller solution. The more it goes down the yeah, the more you go to the left, the smaller it is, silly goose. Yeah, that might be why you're getting them wrong. So, anyways, and then negative six was the other one. So now, why do you think they're adding the smaller, larger thing? Well, it's counterintuitive, right? We would think that eight is bigger than six, and it is. But negative eight is less than negative six. Yeah. Exactly. So let's see if uh, I got it right. Duh, what would you think? Dang it. What did you think was going to happen? You were going to get it wrong. All right. Now, one last thing I want to show you guys. You could do this the same way in the table of values. So if I go table, right, what did I say it was? Negative 6 and negative. So look here. When x equals negative 6, y1 equals 4, y2 equals 4. And if I go up two more spaces, when x equals negative 8, y1 equals 4, y2 equals 4. There's one more thing I want to show you. This is kind of a cool thing. It's uh, what if I wanted to count by something different other than ones? The next thing I want to show you is the table set. So if you hit second and then you hit window, this is the x increment. That's what you count by. Right now, we're counting by ones. It goes from x equals 0 to x equals 1 to x equals 2. I could put a decimal in here. If I put 0.25, it's going to count by 0.25s. So now when I hit table, well, bam, with the bacon sizzle, it's 0.25. And then I can see all the values. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, let me stop this video.